we can take this shit over. We can, you know, as 9-11 kind of show, we can kind of, there's a lot of shady shit that can happen that we can, we can get the financial information. Uh, terrorists can come in and find out and get the, you know, but th it's, it's too big of a premise to just surmise to kill the guy who started it and it's all over. It's over forever. And it's like, that's really what it felt like, that it was all about kill that guy, the end. And the way the, the, the power of bullshit got John McClane to kill him. Because there's a moment where, like, at the end, he's, the girl shoots one of the henchmen in the foot, and he doesn't shoot her in the head. And I'm sitting there going, there's no fucking way that a guy would get shot in the foot by a girl and then kind of not do anything. Like, keep, keep the guy alive, because... It's like, she's not used... You don't get it. She's not useful. There is no bargaining chip. She's dead. She's useless. The only one in that room that's important is the Matt guy. And you're like, well, if they kill him, then the Matt guy's not going to decrypt the thing. That is not true. Because he was going to decrypt anyway. And it was just, it felt like, like that just felt so like, it just, it, it's like, no, it's like, a guy is not going to not decrypt something because you killed the two people. It's like, you could torture him to do it, you know, and you could, you could, like, he was a pussy, you know, Justin Long is a guy who's a pussy, and he would have totally, if you just kept shooting him, he, like, he would have eventually undecrypted the thing, but I think that, that that's not the issue, the point is, is that, like, you would have hoped that, that the way that they, that that arrived to that would have been better, like, I mean, there, I, you know, while I was watching, I was thinking of more interesting things, like, like, a more interesting villain would have probably been able to take financial money, and, you know, from people like Republicans and, you know, shady Enron places, and say, you know what, you know, let's take that money and transfer it into schools and education, and, like, let's just do that as a side thing. Like, is it, you're doing that. The guy over there on that computer is taking all this money that should be distributed to places like firemen, and, and then, like, suddenly, you have a more interesting villain, that, like, he's good because it's, like, on the one hand, he's doing this crazy shit, but he's he's like, tomorrow morning, everybody's going to wake up, and they're going to find all this money in, you know, cancer research and all this other, you know, like, and then, and not only that, you have another thing that's like, you know, like, I, you know, they have, like, V for Vendetta, they did a V for Vendetta where they were able to take over the airwaves. How cool is that premise to be able to be like, you know, to, you know, couldn't they hack in and take video of, like, people, like, you know, they could have had an hour of, like, Truths that you that our government doesn't want you to know about, and air fucking like video footage of, you know, uh, JFK assassinations, uh, anything like anything that the government didn't want you to know, and kind of V for Vendetta style kind of show that like, oh, the government there's a lot of stuff that like, oh, here's it where they took a bunch of money, or oh, you know, like you you wonder like why didn't he get the American public on his side, like. Because there's, it just seems stupid. That it was like he was just gonna take all the information. Tom was gonna take all the information and then go hide for the rest of his life. They, they would have been looking for him. So it just felt like it just felt like if you're gonna do that, at least have a good, like maybe a moralistic view. That's like, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get the money, but I'm also doing like a like one trillionth of the money I'm giving away to really good charities and good. You know, I'm taking it away. It's like I'm Robin Hood. I'm stealing from the rich and I'm giving it back to the poor with a computer or something. But I'm also taking a big chunk for myself, you know, and that, you know, and I'm also going to use that, like, like I guess kind of like a swordfish approach where it's like, you know, I'm going to put it into counterterrorism or I'm going to put it into this or I'm going to put it in, you know, and I'm going to, you know, like, like where he, you feel like he's really intelligent and like, even if the cops do catch him, he's still got a backup that's like, you can't arrest me because if you do, then such 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 code is going to go out. And you're sitting there like there's not really a lot of intelligence on the villain's part, other than just I'm going to steal all the money and get out of here. And then you're you're sitting there kind of going, I don't really know. That doesn't really make sense to me. Plus, like Lucy McLean, I guess as a character, she's not stupid, but she's not. I don't know if she was really that necessary. I mean, what is what is she's not like I, I don't really know. What, like, like, like to me, it was like okay, if you want John McClane to 
you want to if you want to throw John McClane off, well then why don't you put take her out of the building you're in and put her like in an escapable situation and have that escapable situation be rigged with a bomb that will explode and kill John McClane. And then if that escapable situation doesn't work, you have 50 guys outside with guns that are going to shoot John McClane. And if he still survives, you're going to put guys... Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why not make it like like Simon, where he was like, I'm going to put a lot of obstacles to distract you. And in a way, like, that is a much more realistic approach than just, oh, I'm here at this place, I'm coming to get you. It's like, no, you're not coming to get me. Uh, your daughter's in a helicopter, and you need to go get her. Well, I'm going to kill you, then I'm going to go get her. No, you're not going to do that, because you have to go get her now. Or if I die, then the pilot has specific instructions that if he does not hear my voice and I'm dead, he's going to crash the helicopter and kill him, kill her. Because it's remote controlled. Or it's, you know, like something that's like, wow, intelligence being used on John McClane. And not just kind of like, I'm just going to keep trying to shoot you, or I'm going to keep trying to blow you up, but more like, you know, it's a win-win situation for me. So I think that was a, you know, that was a huge problem with, with this kind of movie that it was like it just didn't feel like a John McClane movie, and the premise was much bigger than kill bad guy, everything is resolved the next day. It just felt too big for something like like that kind of ending, and that's what it is. It just ends that way that that this cop was the only person that was able to get close enough to him, and no one else was. So it just I didn't like that, and that's my review on Live Free or Die Hard.